Hi, I'm Nathan Zampronio, and I'm speaking to you here from the historic township of Windsor in New South Wales, on the banks of the Hawkesbury River. Named in 1810 by Governor Macquarie after Windsor on the Thames, and where we have a long felt and special kinship with the royal family. Behind me is the historic and beautiful St Matthew's Anglican Church, designed by the ex-convict architect Francis Greenway and consecrated in 1822. The church is celebrating its bicentenary this year and it has never looked better. It received a $120,000 grant from the New South Wales Heritage Fund, matched dollar for dollar by the local congregation to restore the grounds and the upper windows which were whitewashed and opaque for decades. I was privileged earlier to visit the belfry and ring the bell cast in 1820. Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth visited here in April of 1970, one of 16 visits that she made to Australia during her 70 year reign. We have just completed a moving memorial service on this, the National Day of Mourning for the passing of the late Queen. So what do we, living in the town bearing the name of the Royal House, think of these historic events? In a world where politics is a racket and leaders squabble to gain and cling to political power, we think that the example that Her Majesty set of quiet, reliable, dignified servant leadership truly makes her worthy for history to remember her as Elizabeth the Great. The Queen's ability to be above politics was something that explains the outpouring of both sadness and gratitude for her lifetime of service to the whole Commonwealth, including Australia. With the official period of mourning ending, it is likely that Republicans will seek to rekindle the debate about whether Australia should have a president instead of a constitutional monarchy. 24 years ago, there was a national referendum on this question, which was defeated in every Australian state and by 56% of voters in this community. I played a small part as the local president of the Hawkesbury chapter of Australians for a Constitutional Monarchy. <laughs> I was one of the three amigos. Julian Lisa, Natasha McLaren Jones and myself were offered up to the media as the young guns of the No campaign. We're all a little rounder at the edges now, but it pleases me that the three of us went on to careers in all three tiers of Australian government. Julian is now the federal member for Barara, and Tash is in the New South Wales upper house. <laughs> Perhaps I was the runt of the litter in local government, but it pleases my sense of symmetry, and this is absolutely my happy place to be able to represent you here in my own community. At this hour, support for an Australian Republic has collapsed. Most people are sanguine about the rule of Charles III, whom I believe will be a good king. But when you hear the debate ramp up, and I'm sure that you will, observe that the challenge for Republicans will be to sow dissent and discord about our current constitutional settlement among a population who are generally quite happy with the stability of the political system that we have had since Federation. I think it will be hard to convince people that a system that has worked well for over a century needs to be completely gutted when there are so many other issues that we must confront in our society right now. People are generally neither engaged nor educated about our political system. And I should know, I am a school teacher and civics education is a particular passion of mine. I know, for example, that around the time of that last referendum, a poll of two and a half thousand Australians was conducted about their knowledge of how government works. Only 40% of respondents could recall the names of the two houses of parliament. Only 24% knew that the Senate represents the states and only half of respondents knew that the High Court is the top court in Australia. I look for ways to explain these concepts to my students. I once asked a libertarian friend to explain why he supported the monarchy, and the answer that he gave really stuck, and I like to pass it on to others. What could be better than a political system where you bundle up all the powers that a potential despot or autocrat would wish to abuse 
and which we see abused around the world today. And then you send those powers to be held in trust to the other side of the world and then given to a benign figure who by long custom and precedent is bound by the Constitution to never use them except at utmost need. If you think that Australia doesn't need an insurance policy against dictatorship, just ask a migrant friend who chose to come to Australia from a less fortunate country than our own. We don't know how lucky we are, and our rights flow from the Crown and are protected by the Crown under our Constitution. When the debate about our future comes, it need not be a contest between head and heart where we pitch trendy political social engineering ideologies against the fading glow of affection for a late queen. The facts are that the cost of becoming a republic to Australia would be absolutely staggering, and we would be invited to abandon our ties of history and language, and of law and of culture and kinship, and of migration and mutual affection, and of trade and defence, and replace a universally respected figure at the top of our political system with either a vacuous celebrity or an exports person or another politician with an axe to grind, and all likely under a new flag that none of us would recognise or respect. I think Australians have too much sense to accept that argument. It isn't or shouldn't be about the person of the monarch. There are 29 monarchies apart from the British Commonwealth around the world. And overwhelmingly, it's been proven that they have more stable societies, less corruption, reliably democratic governments, and higher standards of living than their neighbours, who are republics, rich or poor. It's part of our patrimony as Australians to enjoy and to pass on those advantages, dearly bought, as part of the contract, as Burke said, that society strikes between those who came before, those alive today, and those yet to be born. Or, as it's often more simply put, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Thanks for watching. Thank you.